So this event is being scheduled for 25th, 26th and the 27th August. So yesterday we have conducted the fast day and tomorrow we are having the morning hours and uh, today is the second day. If you have not registered for tomorrow's program, you can register there. And here in this particular program, you will be learning various option techniques. Yesterday you have learned the basics of the options. Suppose if you have missed yesterday's program and you wish to view the recording of the event, you just click on our YouTube channel and this is the first video which is there. So you can just click on this particular video and this video explains the first day's program. I have just given that essential option study part 1. So this is what I have mentioned. So if you have missed the event, then you can just visit this particular video and learn those basic concepts. Learned yesterday. So today we will learn about the put call ratio. We will learn about the put call priority ratio and how to trade in the intraday and arbitrage trade that also I will be taking today and also I will be taking the Greek neutral strategy if the time permits. So to start my session, so I will be first taking you across the intraday and arbitrage strategy in the options how you can trade. So while trading in the options specifically for the intraday, so what are the things you require? So this is the user manual of the one standard deviation formula. So wherein I have just given a clear cut indication that how to trade in the options for intraday. I'll just take you across to that same user manual. So which explains that methods we need to follow for intraday trade in options. So while trading in the options for intraday trade, we need to know whether to trade in call option or put option and which strike of the option we should choose to enter a trade and what is the entry level and where we can put the stop loss and come out or what will be the target. So these are the four different area we need to understand. If I am trading in a call option, why I am trading? If I am trading in a put option, why I am trading and which strike of option I should choose for the trading and where I should enter, what will be my stop loss and how I come out from that. So if you are using our software, one standard deviation software, then you will be getting a screen like this. Herein, just you check any of the instrument, future instrument, load the data. So you will get all call option and put option data will be loaded here. So here we have given two modes, one is native and web. Native mode means you will be seeing same result in your screen. And web mode means it will take you to a web browser wherein you can see those results, but results will be same. So here, so here, after loading the data, no, now market is not operational, market is closed, and we have settled at 8629.85. This is the price last traded, or 8630. I'll just click on the calculate button. Once I click on the calculate button, I am getting the futures different trend level. Future if currently at 8630 and for intraday basis if it is in a running market you can get a better picture. So here my entry must be 8653 and it has first target, second target, third, fourth and final target. And final target having a chance still 8701, 0.738702 8, you can say. And if it is falling 8636 below, it is having a downtrend and it has the probability to touch to 8588. So this is what it is telling and this reference is being taken. Either it will be a closing price, it will take sometime it will take the opening of the day and sometime also it will take the current price of the day. So based on this particular specific segment, if you look into currently, assume that market is in a running condition and we are at 8630 level. My downtrend starting at 8636 and I am just fast target. I have just penetrated. I am here just couple of points below the fast target. 
so at this particular point of time so i have already given my price has already given the downtrend breakout it is just couple of point below the first target so in this situation i must choose to trade in the put option if i am a option buyer if i am buying the options i must choose the put option because i have already given a the underlying asset already given a downtrend breakout so once you choose this particular of means put option which strike you should decide so if you just compare here if you just compare here our reference price is 8629 our downtrend price also 8636 so nothing wrong if i can go to 8650 put option or 8600 put option because this is the nearest strike which is as per my trend confirmation the nearest strike which is suitable for me is 8650 or 8600 strike put option why i chosen the put option because it has given the downtrend breakout why i have chosen why i am choosing 8650 or 8600 strikes because that is near to my downtrend price so i am just going for that so i am just going for that i'll choose the 8600 put and which is currently at 115 rupees and i will once again go for the calculation so currently it is at 115 14.114.95 if i am a buyer of this put option i could have bought at 112 nothing wrong if i am buying at this price because i am just couple of points below this first target and price is at 114 rupees and 95 paisa if i am buying this one then my first target means i have missed the 112 but i still can buy so i can keep my first target 117 second 120 third is 126 and fourth is 131 and i will go on trailing the stop loss based on the same principle as i am doing for the future and it is telling that implied volatility currently in this particular option is 16.34 however the underlying asset volatility is only 7.74 so this is the volatility info i am getting and i am also getting all the delta gamma omega vega and theta if i am going to implement the same thing for a option strategy i can still use this option greek info but if i am not using it for the option strategy then it is of no use for me so put option i have decided because downtrend breakout is given strike i have decided which is close near to the my downtrend breakout price point and for this particular entry i'll be keeping a stop loss of 106.39 106.39 or 106 i can put it as a stop loss and i can use the same thing suppose if you are a hedger if you say that yes if i am just i am buying at 114 rupees and if the stop loss is hitting then i am just losing 8 rupees this i also i do not want to take this 8 rupees risk can this 8 rupees will be reduced by some extent can this 8 rupees will be reduced by some extent by 2 rupees or 1 rupee so if that will be your idea then you just do the trade in a different way you buy the options as per the trend so you buy the options as per the trend which is 114 rupees and 95 paisa so this is the current price of the option so you can still by the put option at this this price then you can think of think of selling a put option below 8588 strike because this is the last target for the nifty for intraday and i am asking a strike to sell below that so you can think of one 550 put option or you can think of a 8500 put option so if you are just thinking of selling a 8550 put option along with this along with this one so you can you can still sell it at 96 rupees 96 rupees so it is telling that currently at 96.3 because this also in market value we are buying and this also 8550 550 put option we are selling at 96.33 so this is what we are doing 
and we know that when the final target will come 8588 will come very carefully you listen this part when the final target will come you will be getting 131 so your 115 rupees of investment will be giving you 131 so you will be making a profit of 16 rupees in this so your first call what you have taken it will be giving you a profit of 16 rupees and same way if I can analyze this 8550 put option so I will be getting that this particular time it will be trading at 110 rupees and 78 paisa so you will be making almost almost the similar kind of losses so 100 and 111 if I can make it so 96 if I can less it from here so 15 rupees you will be making a losses from here however this this is only a theoretical presumption so this difference which will be just one rupee that may be little more little more so you will be getting some three or four rupees of profit here but the mess, most important factor here if you sell here this 96 rupees and the stop loss is triggered here then you will be getting almost almost so seven rupees gain from here and eight rupees loss from here so seven rupees you can gain if the stop loss trigger for that put up sun and you can just your net loss can be derived to be one so this also one idea you can implement you can implement and a little more more deeper strike if you can go also in the beginning part of the series this is also a good idea if you go for instead of 8550 if you go for 8500 then you can from 81 to 93 some 12 rupees you will be losing 16 rupees you will be gaining so 4 to 5 rupees you will be making the profit however if it is if it is sliding on, on the put option is triggering the stop loss then you can retry near about 8 rupees from there so very idea is if I am an intraday trader if I am buying this thing as 115 I can still put a stop loss still put a stop loss of 100 and 106 rupees and come out so here 8 rupees loss I can take if I want to manage this 8 rupees loss because if I don't want to trade with one lot I want to go for 100 lots I want to go for 200 lots so they are 8 rupees per per lot it is 8 into 75 if you take that is a big amount and 100 and 200 multiply it's a huge loss can come I can still manage that 8 rupees loss by selling some options. I got a downtrend breakout. I bought a put option, nothing wrong in that. However, if I can still hedge that put option with some other options, then in case it is being impacted, the stop loss is got triggered, then my losses can be reduced to a great extent. So this also you can think as a trading strategy for intraday if you are a option intraday trader so any questions in this regard you can ask two different tricks of trading in the options one which strike to choose 8600 or 8650 why that put option I am choosing because my current price which is 8629 is given a downtrend breakout that's why I am choosing a put option so Based on trend, I decide whether to trade in the put option or call option. Then based on the price at that moment, I am deciding which strike of call or put I am going to choose. So based on that, I have decided I will be trading at 8600 put option. Currently at 115, I am just entering at 115. My objective is to get 131 or I can just stop loss, I can put at 106. However, whenever I am putting that 106 as my st trailing stop, uh, the stop loss for the trade, so I have 9 rupees to lose. If I lose, I will lose that 9 rupees. But many of you, what do you do? You enter in a huge quantity in the call option or put option. That is a general behavior of many of the traders. So that, though it looks very small, when the quantity increases, it lands off in a very big amount. So I am telling you a second trick, whenever you enter at 115 rupees or 114 rupees, nothing wrong if you can just sell one same put option 
strike below 8588 you can choose 8550 you can choose 8500 also so yes it will impact the profit no doubt about that however it can protect your losses or it can manage your losses to an extent of 5 to 50 to 60 percent or more than that if your losses is being managed by 60 or 70 percent profit is reduced no doubt about that so loss management is very essential so you are just managing the losses so that will make your trading very healthy so that is why we are the second trick we are applying if your number of lots are unique there is another technique of intraday option trade exist which is known as the option arbitrage technique so here once you once you go for the calculation of the future and here if you are using our smart smart it software then you get one column for option arbitrage this is not there in the one standard deviation it is only there in the smart it so once you go for this option arbitrage technique you just click on that so nearest six different strikes so wherever the underlying asset will be there so nearest six different strikes what a premium they are trading what is the fair value what is the arbitrage value present in that so these are the things you will get here so what is the fair value what is the arbitrage value all these things you will get it here so you can say that this call options whatever it is trading it is having a different different arbitrage value put options whatever it is trading it is having a different arbitrage value so if i can say this is the arbitrage opportunity what i was telling you so 8600 we are buying which is having a positive arbitrage value of 32 rupees if i am buying it means i am paying 32 rupees more to the market positive arbitrage value means that is the excess it is there it should be trading at 82 rupees it is trading at 115 so 32 rupees more it is trading and if I am selling this 8550 so I am just getting back 30, rupi 30 rupees of the arbitrage value because this arbitrage value is only 30 so 66 is the fair value it is trading at 96 so by this process I am paying 32 I am paying 32 and I am getting back 30 so only the 2 rupees value I am paying to the system 2 rupees of arbitrage value I am paying to the system so but though this won't be resulted to a profit this will not be resulting to a profit because the amount I am paying is more amount I am receiving is it's less so in this particular put side if I trade I may not be making good gains I may not be making any gains because this 2 rupees I am paying extra but look into this side of a call option so this arbitrage value which starts with 30 rupees 20 rupees and so on it sees down it sees down to 1 rupee to 2 rupee once you close near to your settlement cycle so here if I am just going for 8550 and buying at 173 rupees 46 rupees less I'm buying I'm just I'm just selling one 8800 at 29 so here 46 rupees lesser price I got a commodity I sold a commodity wherein I have also received 29 rupees less I could have got 29 rupees more I got less but one commodity I bought which is I also I got at a bargain of 46 rupees less so if I can just compare work between this thing so 7 and here here you will get here you will get 3 2 are 1 so 17 rupees of arbitrage value I have received but when to enter this particular trade that is very important this arbitrage value is what you are getting in real market once you go on finding out this arbitrage value different different occasions you will get different arbitrage opportunities better to test this thing in the morning hour before 10 o'clock and look into the trip look into the trend breakout if the uptrend breakout gives very carefully you listen to this part 
if the uptrend breakout gives then enter in arbitrage opportunity enter in arbitrage opportunity in call side if the downtrend breakout gives downtrend breakout gives then enter the arbitrage opportunity in the put strikes so here suppose downtrend breakout has given you have entered to the trade put side you are going to enter so if you are going to enter a put side arbitrage opportunity then you can think in this order you can think in this order so just 8700 or 600 so 600 having very lesser value I can go for 8700 I sell it at 160 rupees I will sell so I got 36 rupees of arbitrage value I will buy one 8550 so which is I am just paying 30 rupees. 6 rupees is my arbitrage gain which I will aim for. If the downtrend breakout given, then I can enter this kind of one trade. Wherein 8700 having 36 rupees, I took it to my side because this is the excess in there I received. This 36 by selling the option I received. So by buying this options I paid. So this 6 rupees arbitrage value I can I can realize in the day end. So whenever there is a 8 to 10 rupees more than more than 10 rupees better will be more than 15 rupees. If this kind of arbitrage opportunity you find then better into, enter into the trade. Day end at least 40 to 60 percent of this arbitrage opportunity will go off and that much of money will become your profit. But when to enter this trade that is very crucial. If the uptrend breakout gives, then enter call side arbitrage opportunities. If downtrend breakout happens, then enter the put side arbitrage opportunity. So if you are buying, then and try to mobilize in this order that you must be in the receiving end. You must not be in the giving end. Suppose if you are buying at 8600 put and selling a 8550 put, you are giving 2 rupees. So that will become a loss that will become a loss. So you need to in both the cases whether you trade in call or put try that you must be in the receiving end of the arbitrage value when that 50-60% of that receiving end of the arbitrage value sits during the day and it perish during the day then you will be profitable in this trade. So this is called your arbitrage technique this also a very successful technique for intraday trader. This also gives you a good return having very less exposure into the market. And this is feature available only in the smart finance integrated tool SF IT tool and it is not there in the that uh, our one standard deviation tool. It's of option trading. What I used to say about your put call ratio and put call priority ratio. When we talk about the put call ratio, put call ratio is number of puts what is there divided by the number of calls, whatever is there here. So this is a real time basis, it will be changing. So this also I have told you very clearly, whenever you vary between 0.85 less than 0.85, you are in a bearish trend, above 0.5 to 1.05, this is known as your so sorry this is uh, above 0.85 to 1.05 it is a range bound trend and 1.16 above your trend is uptrend it is for the nifty alone when you talk about this put call ratio this particular rule it is applicable only to the nifty put call ratio it is not stock specific it is not specific to bank nifty Bank Nifty, whenever you are com computing, so Bank Nifty having a different series now. It starts with 1st September, 1st sep September, again weekly options are there, monthly options are there. So together you have to take all. So you have to, whenever you are going to apply the same rule for Bank Nifty, you need to take all open interests available in all different, different kind of expiries and add together and then you need to take that put call ratio then that will give you a clear picture or only the weekly options if you are looking into that particular week's options uh, put call ratio if you take also that will work out 
So this is called out your put call ratio. Now individual put call ratios also there. So that also gives you certain clue about the market trend. Whenever any particular strike is having the highest open interest, if you see in the call side, so we are getting 8,950 having now 41 lakhs of open interest. So this is considered to be a highest resistance point for our move and highest resistance point for our move and followed with it is having a 8,700 8, which is the second highest open interest. This is also considered as a potential resistance for our move. And if you look into the support, we are getting a support at 8,500. Also we have a very good support at 8,400. Based on whichever the strike having the highest open interest, that act as a support. And if you can take the individual put call ratio, some analyst used to say that 8,700 put call ratio, 8,600 put call ratio. So based on that also they used to give some output. But that outlook is not that much reliable because these values will change dynamically and very rapidly it can change. So by taking individual strikes put call ratio and based on that projecting a trend is not that much successful. So this is about the put call ratio and one more concept is present in our study which is called our put call priority ratio. So when you talk about put call priority ratio there is a specific equation is available. So it is telling that it is telling that call options premium added with strike multiplied with e to the power interest rate and time in year equal to put options price and current price of the future. So this these things should be equal. But if any deviation in this principle is there, then we can say that it is having a some arbitrage value and put is costlier or call is costlier. Suppose if I am just taking now, you can say, you can say I am just taking one value of 8500. Say 8500 call and put we will be evaluating. So 8500 call and put with the put call priority ratio we will be calculating. 8500 call is at 206 rupees and 55 paisa and this is 81. So 200 and 8500, 206 and 55. So 206.55. This is for call and the put is having 81 rupees. This is for put. So standard interest rate is 10%. So here interest rate I am taking as 10% and time, time in year. So I have 26, this is the price and I am expiring on 29th, 29th of September, 29 days are there, here 5 days. So 34 days are till expiry, so 34 days till expiry, 34 days till expiry. So this is the thing is there, I will be go going to calculate this thing, call option premium added with strike and these things. So, so, so this is my calculation, we will start. So call option premium added with this is the strike and this uh, should be multiplied with exponential the relative return so e to the power rate of interest so 0.1 into time time should be in year so so this is the days so days to year divided by 365 so this is what i have got so 8786 i have got this is in the call side. So put side it is telling me it is just what is the price, the current price of the future, at what price the future is trading. So that need to be added. So future contract I will just look into the future contract and last product is 8629.85. So I am just going for 8629.85 added with this one. So I have to put one equal symbol and here I have to add it. So I am getting 8710. So if you look into this call side 8786, put side is 8710.85. So this says, says that your call side is having a higher value as compared to the put side. 
So this says that calls are at this particular point more costlier than the puts. However, though puts are having a higher IV, but calls are more costlier as compared to the put side. So calls are more costlier as compared to the put. So what, what is the thing I can do? If calls are more, more costlier than the put, then I can form net credit, calendar spread. I can form covered call, covered call because calls are more costlier than put. So covered call, future buy and, few, and any call option sell. I can still protect it with the put options. So put options also I can still protect. So any net credit spread I can form, net credit straddle I can form, strangle I can form in the call side. So calls are more costlier as compared to the put. So I can think of forming any net credit spread or I can form covered call strategy. Had this thing to be different, if the puts is costlier as compared to the calls, then I can go for the covered put. I can form any credit spreads in put side. So, so that also I could have done. So that is how this put call priority ratio help us to identify to form a particular strategy. So this is what is we can utilize in our study put call priority ratio and coming back to this option Greeks it is having a delta theta vega omega so so many Greeks are there so delta says that how your option premium will change with respect to the underlying asset price movement underlying asset means when your future moves by one percent how much percentage your option price will change option premium will change so it has a specific formula so theta so time value theta is respect to your time value decay. Each one day you near towards the expiry, how much time value you are going to lose. So that is your theta. So when it comes to Vega, based on the each 1% change in your volatility, how much change you can expect in the option premium. That is your Vega. So Vega based on volatility, theta based on the time value, Delta based on the intrinsic value. So currently we are saying that market is highly volatile, volatile or so. Means the underlying asset is having more than 40% of volatility. Then only you can say it is market is more volatile. In that case, so each 1% change in the volatility because it is high. It can form to medium or low. It cannot stay there forever. So in that particular time when you have a, when you have a, high volatility that time to form a Vega zero or Vega negative strategy is recommended because Vega negative means once it is falling you will be get benefited. So if it is volatility is low so you can say 10 to 15 percent is there forming a Vega positive strategy is also useful in a low volatility territory and those who are aiming from the theta because time value decay is the time value decay is a must factor for the trade. So when you trade based on the theta, so that is a must. So you have to approach the conservative approach and you have to derive the strategy based on that. So when you look into a delta, delta positive strategy you can form, you can form delta negative strategy or you can form delta zero strategy. Delta positive strategies are normally formed whenever there is a toughest correction happened and then after volatility is low. When correction happened and volatility is low, that time you can form a delta positive strategy. Delta negative strategy you form. When there is a runoff happened in the market, whatever we are experiencing now, a huge runoff happened in the market, then we are consolidating, we are not moving anywhere. So, and volatility also low in that point of time if you form net delta negative strategy it may benefit you when the prices will fall down. Delta zero strategy normally we recommend whenever volatility is high and trend is delta zero strategy trend is saying that you may be 
landing off in a consolidated market that time you can form a delta zero strategy so i have told you when to form a delta zero delta positive or delta negative i have also told you when to form a vega neutral strategy and when to form a theta neutral strategy so these are the things but it needs a great deal of study from your end so that also required and and that only can give you a clear understanding on this method this is happen our sessions it is very difficult to explain you all those concept from the grassroots point to advanced level however you can continue your study and uh, get some more things and tomorrow i'll tell you when to form what kind of strategy somewhat in detail and if you are a serious learner if you are thinking that as yes, market is a science i need to learn something so that i'll be a long term achiever in the market then you think about our courses and softwares we have 12 products totally and we have in futures and option we have fantastic courses we have a book dvds and along with that we give some softwares also option strategy software the arbitrage software also you have seen now so these are the things if you are having a interest that know those concepts are i need to understand before i become a trader then you can think about our courses which is very unique in nature which gives you a complete understanding about the market and you can earn rationally not with one guesswork not with one work which is not being tested and you can earn nicely using our concepts so if you have a long term goal in the market to achieve and make trading as your career you may think about our courses and softwares and currently we are running one discount which is going to expire tomorrow so the 17000 we are getting at 15500 valid till 27th of august so this is a offer we have just given for 3 days and any query about the courses you can call in this particular number call in this particular number so this will give you the means they will tell you the details about the courses and how to order and all you can directly order in our website also you can just go to our website so this offer already we have given in the home page you just click in and you can buy it online also using your credit card debit card or net banking so this is about the product and courses what we have and uh, tomorrow i will be taking when to form what option strategy for your gain and already this week's levels we have given this week's levels we have already uploaded in our site so you can browse our trend report and tomorrow also i'll give some small discussion on the trend report for the next week so with this i'll be ending today's session if you still have some query you can